Hi, I'm Koski and you're watching Abstractus. Abstractus is a new contemporary art program. Its aim is threefold. One, demystify art. Two, bring contemporary art to the masses. And three, make art fun. For the first program, I've chosen a painting that's called Dripping Rock. It formed part of my uh, Between the Rock and Hard Place exhibition, the latest exhibition I had last year. I want to show two things with this painting. First, I was inspired by uh, uh, one of my favorite artists, American guy called Cy or C. Y. Twombly, who specializes in, in abstract and dripping paint. And secondly, how I actually came about doing this painting by f coming across a new material, a material I'd never used before. Basically, uh, basically watercolor pencils that are water soluble. You can draw with them and then when you apply water to it, it works or it behaves exactly like a watercolor. Very simple and very quick to do. As you can see, uh, and I've been criticized a lot uh, for this, again, the painting is a, uh, a representation of the rock of Gibraltar. I've always said this and I've stressed it and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. For me, the subject matter is at all, not at all important. I use it as a starting point, as a means to an end, and I'm not concerned whether I end up with 20 rocks. What I'm trying to do is embark on a voyage of experimentation, of trying out materials and even effects and techniques. And, and the fact that I don't have to waste time thinking of what subject to use saves me time. So that is why I always stick to rocks. Before we embark on the actual painting itself, I'd like to stress a point. We are now at the probably the most frightening moment for any painter. This is the equivalent of stage fright to an artist to a painter when you're confronted with a white, especially a big canvas like this, it's a nightmare. And I can understand, especially young artists, students, scared when the first use of canvas, you know, it's the, the a pristine white surface. I don't want to spoil it, right? This is for me a very important step. Okay, I believe in when in doubt, clout. Or rather, if you're scared of something, attack it, frontally. Right, oh, first thing, paint. This is homemade acrylic paint. Very cheap, basically emulsion, PVA glue, mixed in equal parts, gives you cheap acrylic. And when you've got a large surface like this, it pays to, to use that. Okay, without fear, right? First thing, just attack the canvas. Now you can't spoil it anymore. You've already spoiled it. I'm gonna carry on for a while. What a pity, what a waste of a white canvas, right? But at least it's now gone beyond the spoiling point. Again, I'd like to stress that uh, for, for, for young students, young kids at school, never, never, ever be scared of ruining a painting. A painting never gets ruined. And I stress that, never gets ruined. You might take it to a stage where you think it's not as good, you can always bring it back. And at times, the journey of bringing it back is probably worth more than actually the fear of spoiling it. So never be scared of spoiling a painting. Uh, materials, I'm using a normal painter's, as in a, a wall painter's brush. Nothing, nothing special, cheap and nasty, but for, for, for what it's for, it'll do the job. Actually, as I'm painting this, as I'm painting this, I've just thought of something new. And, and I believe in that when you, when you paint, the journey is the important bit. If you know where you're going to end, there's no point in taking that journey. So I always leave an element of, of uh, improvisation. I've just spotted something. I like the brush strokes. So I'm going to leave the bottom bit, as you can see there, with, with splash marks and brush strokes. And just see what happens. See that rough edge and that dripping paint? I'm going to actually use that as part of the effect. And remember the third thing I said about uh, uh, contemporary art, make it fun, enjoy what you're doing. Before anything else, enjoy what you're doing. 
let yourself go, relax. Normally I'd be listening to music now, which is something I use to sort of, uh, you know, chill out and get to the next, uh, the next stage of uh, consciousness or whatever. I don't want to get too heavy, but it's, it is true. You, you, you sort of leave the, the normal world when you paint it, or I do at least, and go somewhere else in between that nobody knows where it is. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that and see, I mean, even, you know, do stupid stuff like that. Why not? At the end of the day, it might end up with a nice effect. And that's it. That's finished for now. This was a cooking program or a DIY program. Uh, I would probably have another dry one ready to use. I would take this away and bring out the dry one. Unfortunately, we don't have the time or the resources to do that. So what I thought is I'm going to take this away, let it dry, and we're going to use this for next week's painting. This is, it's going to remain exactly as is, and I'm going to work on it next week. Before we start, I'd like to make a quick pause uh, and talk about you know the way I'm dressed. No, I'm not a, obviously a fashion model. The clothes I wear to paint are really shambles. Mi madre no estaría nada contenta. No estará nada contenta. And I'd like you to zoom into here because this I'm going to use for a later program to show how even something like this could be an inspiration for a, for an abstract art. People are going to think este está loco como una cabra. But anyway, I do get inspiration from this, and actually cut things like that and stick it on a canvas. Okay, I wear gloves, saves time on, on cleaning my hands. Uh, and like I said, no one sees me here, not fashion con uh, conscious, I don't give a, a, I don't care. The painting you saw at the beginning, like I said, was partly influenced by the material I used. These are watercolor pencils, and if you'd like to follow me, Andrew, I came across these in an art shop, a local art shop, Aquatone, they're very simply water soluble watercolor pencils. Very useful, very clean. You can you can draw with them, but then when you apply water to it, it, it becomes something different, it becomes a, a watercolor. So that's where I, I I joined the the Twombly effect of the dripping colour with these pencils. And obviously I already knew I had to, to draw the rock. Okay, my next step. I, I actually started with a, a photograph I took of the rock of Gibraltar, which I then distorted. I actually stretched out to make it fit perfectly into the square, and I wanted to exaggerate the, the, the height, the impressiveness of the rock. Okay, once I did that, uh, I then had to convert that to the canvas. There are loads of ways you can do it. The simplest one, do a grid, and then you do the same grid on the painting, and you literally, you know, like not painting by numbers, but you literally just match the, the, the lines where they cross uh, on the grid. There's another, probably more expensive way, which I've never tried out, but it's an actual getting a projector. I bought this, uh, I don't know where it was, uh, 40 pounds it cost. I haven't used it. it, it's still a bit cumbersome. And then lastly, and that's what I'm gonna to do today, freehand, just, Draw it. At the end of the day, I'm not concerned about the end result today. I just want to show how I came out or how I, I produced this painting. So I'm going to have a go at now at, at, at the freehand rendering of the rock we saw at the beginning. Okay, colors. Um, I'm going to start with a, a black to see what happens. Like I said at the beginning, don't be scared of the white canvas. I, I, I